Yo, what's up, everybody? This is coming live from the Slightly Buzz Podcast Studio. You look like you're 15, so I'm going to need to know who you're buying all these drinks for, and I'm going to have to check your ID because you're 12. <laughs> I was like, I'm not. Also, what a horrid toss. Which one did it? The thicker one? Or the... Yeah, she was definitely thicker, dark hair. I don't know. Yeah, she was wearing a mask, a blue mask. She was not wearing a mask. Uh-oh. I don't know. Because I wear it from both of them. I'm good. She wasn't wearing a mask when I talked to her, but maybe she put one on. I think she had them both on. All I know is that homeboy in the back is playing uh, Mario yep. up on the big screen with his Nintendo Switch. He was living. Dude, I was watching it like it was nobody's tomorrow. I was just like, fuck. This guy's killing it. He was killing it, too. This dude was living. Yeah. This is over at New Hardy Inn? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, so it wasn't quite like a bar, but it was a bar that you could buy drinks out front of. It was considered <laughs> drinks to go. Yeah, drinks to like go. There was like a, a picnic area in the back. But then you, you just sit that? in the back. Yeah, it was sweet. They look a can nice. Can you like, sell to go though? Yeah, you can sell beer to go. Oh, dude, you do it at every liquor capped. store. Like, oh, clever. They put it in a brown bag. Yep. That's how they get around it. Because if you sell you it, you can't undo it. Exactly. You ha- they gave us a free bottle opener. Bro, they yeah. gave me a bag that had a hole in it, and I go to walk away, and I got my hands underneath the bag, and the one I just had a finger on one of them, like in front of me, and the bag just gave way. Oh no! And Kirsten's drink hit the deck. Didn't shatter. Thankfully, it was just an angry orchard in case we did lose it. Yeah, yeah. dude, I have no really idea. Cared. Just water the flowers. That this weak. <laughs> this guy in line looks at me and he goes, "That's got to be a good omen if I've ever seen one. Nobody <laughs> drops a glass bottle like that and not have it shatter." And I was like, "I'll take it." <laughs> nice. All right. I can't believe that today was a good day. I was yeah. like, "The Lord knows that we were supposed to be here today doing, doing the deed, drinking." Yeah, dude, it was cool. They had like a. I'm not going to go as far to say carnival. That's what they were going for. They had, like, a slushy truck come in. They had, like, corn It was dogs. a kid in a candy store, dude. They had elephant ears, man. I did get an elephant ear. Actually, I won about with Kirsten. So Kirsten bought me an elephant what ear. What was the bet? I didn't get in on it, but oh, I just remember yes. Tim being like, Tim was like, oh, yeah, Kirsten, you should definitely go buy me an elephant ear because you owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so what happened was we got there, we got some corn dogs in our first round of beers, and I bought those. He's like, we're keeping it even. <laughs> no, no, that's actually not what happened. Then, you had a corn dog? Yeah. I've never had a corn dog. They're elite. Corn dogs are way better than a hot dog, if you ask me. You like corn dog? No, I do. Wait, but the elephant ear was technically hers because she paid for it, but you ate no, it? No, no. So, so here's what happened. Um, so we were sitting there. I think it was right before you got there. We probably. were sitting probably no farther Happy, from me to the front of that table okay. from a trash can. And she had, like, the wrapper from her corn dog there. And she was like, I bet the elephant ear that I make this shot. Oh my god! Completely throws it five feet over. Blew it. it almost hits like this older biker guy, and then I walked over there, like paused next to the biker guy who was like looking at her, didn't say a word, kept walking. Then she came back, threw it away, sat down. I just looked at that guy who was still looking at us, and I was like, "Yeah, she never played basketball." <laughs> he laughed okay. pretty hard. And then Tim's like, "I just got a free elephant ear out of it though, so nailed it." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Best shot I've seen all day, honestly." Yep, <laughs> worked she was out pretty good. Pissed. Yeah, she like was just like, pissed. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's so was, funny. She's like walking past. Well, it was like, funny because like she got right next to him. Yeah. And then just like didn't say paused. Anything. Like, like was she was going to he- say something. It was a straight up hezzy and then kept walking. She panicked. She panicked. Oh, she panicked. Sorry. <laughs> it was funny. Sorry. Tough scene, dude. It was it, it was cool, though. I, I really think the the vibe gave me like sitting outside at a bar. Dude. I was drinking from a beer bottle. Wait, so you sat outside at a bar and got... Well, we sat outside at this, like, high-top table, dude. It was, like, yeah, a high-top like, table. High-top high tables, a couple yep. of them. Dude, they were doing it right. Like, they they were taking food orders, and you could sit out there, and they are coming out with this megaphone, and this lady would just scream at everybody over this megaphone. Now, um, 
It was actually terrible. Ron, but. your order's ready. Ron, your order's ready. Ron, <laughs> order now. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was terrible. But no, it was a really cool setup. You couldn't go inside at all, even to order that was from a window. Yeah. That's all right. They're, they're playing the system, so. Yeah, no, you it was do. 100% fair. So where you buy beer, it's right out in front, like right on the main road. It's yeah. where you stand in line to buy the beer, and I'm standing there. And all of a sudden, two Oakland County sheriffs come rolling by because there's the uh, the police station right down Grand River right there. Yeah. And do they just were like just rolling by, and they were both just looking at everybody. And I was just I'm like, sure. what's up? I'm six feet. <laughs> Completely legal. They were probably like, you want to go after we're done? <laughs> they legally can't enforce six-foot social distancing right now. Yeah. That's no longer a thing in Michigan. And they can con- we can congregate in groups of a hundred outside. Yep. I as bet long. there was probably like seventy people. 60, yeah, sixty five. There was there was definitely like a good amount of people there, but it wasn't like packed or anything. That sounds cool. I wish yeah, I could have gone. Yeah, pretty cozy. Like we just we hung out in our own corner of the table. It was cool. Didn't really. Yeah, I bet we stayed pretty fairly socially distanced the entire time. Yeah. Sounds yeah, good. it was it was nice to spend. It just looked like I was out with my mom and my dad. It was great. There, it's coming up. Like, you should probably keep him in a stroller. You know, it's funny. He comes back telling <laughs> he comes back to the table after the lady apparently gave him a hard time. And I already bought beer, and both times they didn't ID me. Bro, and she he just comes such... back, and he's just like, yeah, I was telling her, go look at that dude over there with the full beard, and looks like he's 40 with the Michigan hat on. Dude, That's she him. wouldn't sell me it. And she was she was just like, don't, don't Listen, recognize dude, him, even she... though I bought beer like, 15 minutes earlier i was like can i get three things i was like i want to i want beers for me and him and i want an angry orchard for her and she goes who are these for and i was like uh oh, they're for the people that out there on the patio and she goes she goes and i go to show her my id and she goes well, i don't need to see just your id she goes you don't look old enough to buy beer she, and then she's like who are you buying them for and i was like you can see him right there like he's got a beer in his hand she's doing her job man nah in all honesty well, she's no. definitely doing a job. You, you can't say no to that. But here's There's no way. No, no, You're no, not no. wrong. Here's, here's the distinction. When you buy beer at a liquor store, if you're by yourself and you buy a variety of different things, yeah, they can't ask you for more than uh, like ample numbers of ID. At, they made him go moment, get his ID at no, Speedway. But it's not a liquor store because I could just at as easily... At that moment, no. it is operating as a liquor store. No, but you're, it's not, you're not right, though, because you could easily walk up, be like, I'm buying it for those two, not know those two. And then just leave with the drinks. And now she sold them to you. They are sealed beers. It doesn't matter. She has to prove that all the people, like you're buying drinks at a bar. I know you're trying to make the argument this bar is a liquor store. No, that is the legal argument. The loophole only works for them to be open. In that case, he is buying beer as a product, not as a uh, service at a bar. They're two completely distinct things. I know what you're saying. Yeah, so we don't have to argue. That's not, I, I just, that doesn't make sense to me. What? Well, while you guys are talking about that, I'm going to get myself a you know You're asking now? somebody who works at a bar, though, to suddenly pretend that they work at a liquor store. I doubt she has, like, the mental framework in place to function properly. Yeah. They but didn't sit her down and go, well, technically a liquor store. They said, all right. Treat it as a liquor store. Yeah, but also most bars have a two-drink limit at a time anyway, so you were able to buy three or four. I don't know whose team you're on. <laughs> that was just that was that's on time. you, honestly. honestly. We still caught it. If you check the replay, it never touched the ground. I'll give it to him. Thanks, bud. Came in hot. Anyways, yeah, no. So certainly didn't come in cold. It was absolutely phenomenal to get back to a, a liquor store with a patio. The mic. <laughs> and uh, had a lot of fun, man. It was it was good to be back out there. And we only got what four more days to their open down here for good. Dude, it was just cool to see people out and about, like having a good time. Saw right, a couple people from high school too. That was interesting. Oh, it's always interesting. Always interesting. You're just like, hey. What is this? This is a beer from Rochester Mills Beer Company. Yeah. Over in Auburn Hills, Michigan. This is called the uh, Rochester Red Lager. Honestly, this dude. It's amber, I think. The last, the last red ale or American amber that we had was uh, was really good. It was, oh, I think it was like Hang that on. Griffin Claw. Hang on. It says it's an Irish pub style red, not an American. No. Interesting. Oh, That's dude. good to know. My shorts are destroyed. You blew no. it. <laughs> Anytime Tim has some light colored shorts on, you can bet your sweet ass he's going to ruin them. Yeah, these are a little too tight, anyways. Sorry for the viewers. He had these linen shorts that he wore to faster horses, and they were destroyed after day one. I'm not going to lie. I miss those shorts. They were so cozy. They were just so cozy. This poor, uh, that's a beautiful looking beer, honestly. Look at that nice, like, that creamy, is, thick head. That is what you want from an Irish red right there. Come on, Nick. <laughs> What's that? 
Take it easy. Pump the brakes there, stop sign. You see the color red. You know what that means. It smells good. It smells very sweet. Caramely. Get, yeah, I was going to say you get that caramel for sure. Let's do the, let's do the cap it, swirl it. Honestly, this one's pretty strong both ways. Like, that didn't make a huge difference for me this time. Yeah, I get the same. You can kind of smell a little bit of right. malt in there, too. Honestly, I just, I mean, there's definitely a very faint hint of malt, I would say. Yeah. But I definitely just, the sweetness and the caramel is uh is definitely at the forefront of this smell session of this burr. IBU is 18, so that means it's not going to be too bitter. Let's give her a let's give her a taste, boys. Hey, cheers, say? boys. Cheers, fellas. Uh, Here's the episode 18. This is 18. All right, you got to figure that shit out. <laughs> yeah, bro. Can't be on 18. Almost going on 20. Dude, I tell you what. Since I've started working this new shift, like That's I enjoy it. I enjoy it, but like my critical thinking skills, the second half of the day, go to absolutely nothing. Would you consider this critical no, thinking to know what episode we're on? It's not. It shouldn't be. Anything, just like, we're good. We're not, anything I'm not is just kind of flexible. No, no. Like it's, that, it's so true that I've noticed. It's been a week since I've had to start waking up at 4.30 in the morning, and I'm just like, oh, I'm out the door. Everything's done. Yeah. All right. It is nice. So, but yeah, no, this beer. Uh, it's actually good, man. It's pretty good. It's yeah. a real tasty beer. Sitting at 6.3%. Is what I think it says. The back half is throwing me for a loop. I'll put it that way. Yeah, this is the first. Just one. kidding. It's five point seven five. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. I thought it was an American amber. I was totally wrong. I wonder if I mix some stuff up. No big problem. I'm Irish actually. Pun. I'm not fully on board with this beer after my first few sips. I'm not really? gonna lie. It's been the first one in a minute where I took it and I was like, I don't know. I'm hoping it'll grow on me though. You just like, you don't dislike it, but you don't necessarily think there's anything great about it. So far, it's been like an overall kind of mild beer. I uh, guess that's a good way to put it. I feel like it has a little bit like a sour note near the end that I'm not... It doesn't appeal to me. Hmm. I don't know if I'm on the same boat, but... I understand the sour It's got a unique taste, end. dude. I could easily see somebody picking this up and thinking it's going to be something that it's actually not. So, I'll give you that all day. Let's see what it says. This deep red-colored Irish pub-style ale features a rich, malty flavor profile, medium body... A low level of hot bitterness for a great tasting craft beer that pairs well with just about anything. I All think right. that's that last part is very fair. It's just kind of a uh, neutral beer. Mm -hmm. It's not going to kind of mess up whether you're eating seafood, steak, chicken. Doesn't have a lingering salad. aftertaste. That's that's like my biggest key because like that back half is weird. I can't really describe it. It's not, I should like weird's a I don't know. It's, it's a very vague word to use, but hang on one sec. To me, it's not quite sour. It's not sour at all. But I understand what you're saying when you say it has a sour. As I guess once again, tart is I guess the the I wonder if it's, I think maybe those malts are what's doing. No, that. I think it's like the mixture of sweetness and malts is making yeah. what I'm calling sour. Yeah, it's just like um, it's almost kind of like a flat taste on the back half. Like there's not anything that really pops off. Like you get that. No, it doesn't. You're exactly, totally it just right. kind of falls doesn't. flat. But that's I think that's why I almost don't even mind it. Yeah, because like the the, the the taste doesn't linger, so it's like each new sip, it's it's fine. Like you're not getting an overwhelming. Uh, I don't like it's not overwhelming. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> really I'm like, words, I'm words. like, where are the words at? He's like, sorry, I, I was at a bar earlier. Today. I was like, I had two Labatt <laughs> lights. God. It's game uh, over. No, it's it's very neutral. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's not off putting in any manner, but it's also on the same token, it's not outstanding on any manner and that's not to say it can't be an outstanding beer it's just nothing really jumps out yeah they say on their site that this is a great gateway beer which i kind of get mm -hmm. because because there's nothing too outstanding it's something that you can kind of i feel like it'd be easy to get accustomed to yeah. yeah exactly yeah. But we've yeah. been we've been so blessed and so uh, so fortunate for trying all these good beers lately. Yeah, we've been, <laughs> we're yeah, just kind of like ah, like this is a pretty all right beer but it's oh it's tainted now. i think if i was at a bar <laughs> and had this on draft and was just like, oh, I've never had that. I'll give this a shot. It would be one of those, at this point in the drinking, would be like, oh, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Probably won't. We'll probably do something else for the next one, but not going to steer away from it purposely, you know. All right, well, let's say we're at a bar on uh, Monday. Monday, or maybe it's Sunday night at 12.59. And they're just oh, like, hey, you know, we got this brand-new beer, and it's Rochester, uh, Rochester Red. You guys want to give that a whirl? It's only like 275 or whatever. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. Going for it. Yeah. 
This is on draft special all day. It. Tim's going to be like that guy. He's like the bartender's going to mention to be like, we got this uh, on special. He'll be like, oh, dude, just had it. Freaking loved it, dude. It's me. But yeah, give me some of that. And yeah, then he's pretty gonna, much. And the next day, he's like, bro, I'd look like two-hour conversation with that bartender just on beer alone. I believe it. It's happened. I mean, you're at a bar. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's going to happen. Say, I don't see the issue here. <laughs> no issue at all. If anything, it's probably a good move. It's probably a great move. But that brings me back, bars. We got our first taste of it today, dude. And I got to say, miss it a ton. I'm and hungrier for more. Dude, I really am. It's got me excited because we're going up north this weekend in northern bars. There's a huge potential here. Yeah, there's a huge potential. The only, the only issue is there's no Ubers up there. So I'm gonna have to stay sober. Or get pulled over. So yep, don't want to get pulled over. So uh, yeah, probably just gonna have a beer or two and call it quits on the night. Exactly. But that's the thing. You can hang out for a while. You don't have to do anything. You just be there. The atmosphere. Oh yeah. Play no, some I'm pool. There's. Dude, every bar up north has a pool table, guaranteed. Every single one. So I'm basically going to lose a lot of money. Like, I'm not a degenerate gambler until it comes to betting on pool. This is true. I've seen it. It's weird. Like, I will not bet money on things, but the moment I get to a pool table, I'm like, I'm I'm literally just like, I promise you, I'm at least top two here. I never am, though. Yeah, I was about to say, you're usually like top five, but you you can beat anyone, obviously, except for like the really, really serious pool players. But there was one time we were at the Rhino or Susie's, and I played that guy. Dude, I just, I wasn't even talking smack. I was just like, yo, I got quarters on the table, so I had next. And that guy was like, yo, can I play against you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And out of nowhere, he, like, pulls up what appears to be, like, it looks like a gun case. Yeah. Like, you know, like the it's hard shell gun. Yeah, yeah, dude, he whips it out on the table, unclips it, flips it open. He's got, like, a two-piece pool stick, screws it together has a nylon glove for his hand and then chalks them both with, uh, or tosses them both with chalk. And I was just like, what did I just get myself into? He's, he's like, you still want to play? And you're like, no. No, well, I did. And I actually should have won that game because... I don't remember this. No, I don't think you were there. What happened was I was up, I was out of balls and he <laughs> had three balls left and I hit the eight ball in the wrong pocket. And then, like, people were watching and... Then I was like, all right, let's run it back. And he whooped my ass in the second one. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't even close. I, but- too, have a pretty funny story about playing pool at the Rhino. Oh, boy. This one almost ended up bad because me being me, this guy went outside. I did not know. He, I watched ah. him walk. I watched <laughs> this guy leave the pool table and walk out the I'm door almost, of the bar. I was like, done. he's gone. But out of just pure respect, I sat there and I ordered a beer. And I put my quarters on the table. I went and ordered a beer table stayed vacant for that duration of time so i was like okay this table's now mine so then i got uh this other dude or no i got one of our buddies to i was like hey let's play man like i got quarters right here this dude comes walking back in and he goes he goes what the f are you doing on my table and i was like buddy i i was like you left i got quarters down this is my table now yeah just playing that whole card wait but if he left the bar he doesn't get to just come back in it gets done he no. doesn't get the table. Literally, that's exactly what I told him. I was like, dude, I watched you walk out the door. I set my quarters on the table, and then I walked to the bar to order a beer, and you still weren't back. I was like, this is my table. And he was like, and he started fighting me on it. He was like, no. He's like, that's not how this works. He's like, this is a gentleman's game, and you got to abide by the rules. He's like, if you're playing anybody, you're at least playing me. And I was like, honestly, dude, fine. I, I don't care, man. Like, rack him. Let's go. Rack him. And so we started playing... And I called him on slops like two or three times throughout the game. And he got in my face. He was like, he's like, this is bar rules. He's like, you you obviously don't know how to play the game. And I'm like, first of all, you started off this game by telling me it's a gentleman's game. I'm playing by gentleman's rules here. I was like, slops a thing. If you don't call your shot and you're hitting other balls at the same time, it doesn't count, buddy. Sorry. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I was like, bro, I, I will run that to the grave. I promise you that. And so whatever, he ended up letting me take my shots. I smoked him out by like five balls. Really? And then at the end of the game, he got in my face again and was telling me like how disrespectful I was and how I didn't appreciate a gentleman's game. And our buddy stepped in. He got in this dude's oh, face, literally please. put hands on him. He was like, you better back the F up or I'm going to put you down. And I was <laughs> just like, at this point, dude, I'm not going to lie. I am out the door hammered. And I'm just like, yeah, get him. <laughs> and dude, it was like, it was one of those just like, movie like movie scenes that went down and i was just like roadhouse <laughs> it was, it was phenomenal because from my perspective 
the one thing is he was gone. Like, okay, if someone goes, hey, I have the table. I just won, like, four straight games. I'll be I'm back. I'm going out to grab a smoke real quick. I'll be back in That's five. That's what he said, yeah. That is one thing. He was that like, is, I went out and had a smoke. He was gone for a solid 20 minutes, and there was probably, I'd say, a 10-person waiting line for pool. After the five-minute mark. Yeah. After Okay, you could even stretch it to 10, but this guy was gone for, like, 20 minutes. Especially in a busy bar. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was popping. popping. It was absolutely nice. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so it, it was really weird, and I remember... I think Kirsten actually came up to me and said, like, yo, check out what's going on over here. Because that's when he was kind of getting near face. But I would, I don't even remember what I was doing. I may have been playing darts on the other side of the bar, actually. Dude, I want to see. Weren't you playing Buck Hunter at one point? I, I mean, I played Buck Hunter there. But I'm pretty sure I was playing darts that night. Could have been. And I just remember, like, seeing the group of, group of our buddies that were over there. Oh, yeah. I was like. First off, you could have definitely handled that dude by yourself. He, he was just a shit talker. Yeah, 100%, but it would have been, like, I don't know. I feel it like... would have been a fight. But <laughs> second, I, as soon as I saw the other guys who were over there, I was like, oh, it would get ugly quick. He was like an dude. older guy, dude. He was definitely like an older gentleman. He was probably like 27, 20, 28. Dude, this guy was over 50. Fact. Hard Are you fact. talking about a different night then? Hard fact, dude, over 50. What? Definitely, yeah. Because I would. That's like when, dude, when he got shoved a little bit there at the end. Like this man oh, almost yeah, tumbled. Yeah, 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 yep. Like he would have had a bad time, but he was he talking just, a lot of shit because he, he was he was messed up. Was this the dude who like kept lingering afterwards, just kind of? Yeah, out? he was. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, kind of yeah, hanging yeah. around, waiting, and we were just like, dude, you're not getting back in on this table. Like we're not going to let you. I actually remember. Dude, yeah. Okay. Well, that happened twice. Do you remember the young kid who was super pissed at you? Dude, that was at Founders. No, I remember that too. Oh. Was another one. I had to I'm always getting in shit during the like around the pool tables. The founders one, I walked over there. I was like, eh. That was funny. <laughs> it was only an issue once the one dude left and his friend came in. His friend was huge. He came around the corner and he was like six four, and I was like, dude. You're I was like, like why do like, I do this? He's like, we have an army, and then Nick this just turns like, around. He's like, point to me. He's like, but we got a Hulk. I was <laughs> like, but I like, have yeah. a Tim. <laughs> 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 that was that was a great day. Oh my gosh. Dude, uh, that actually was a great day. Speaking of just bar scenes, dude, we were mobbing from bar to bar in Grand Rapids and we wind up at this bar that is a pong table. Oh, we're playing great. each other tin, in pong. Tin cup? Tin, tin can. Tin, tin, tin can. can. Playing each other in pong. We if like, you lost the game, you had to buy shots and you had to take one. Yeah. So. We were there for like two hours. Yeah. And like literally, it was probably. It was, was it a Friday? I didn't have to work on a Friday. Yeah, I didn't have and class or anything. I drove up. That's when I was still. No, that's when I was... I don't, I don't even remember. I think I was at Michigan at that point, in Ann Arbor. Yeah, you were. And I drove up on a Friday. You would, It was kind of chilly out. It was that fall. It no, it was like cold as shit. Yeah. And we just walked from bar to bar, having a good time. And this bar, literally, there was maybe two other people in there. Yeah. And they had like $2 Fago shots. Yep. And we just went for... Like you said, two hours of Pong. It was... I lost the first game. Day, dude. I cool. lost the first game, and I remember looking at the sheet, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick, like, the biggest bitch shot you can find on here, and it's going to be elite. <laughs> and it was some strawberry fago shot. Oh, it was shot. terrible. Dude, it, it was, was terrible. Horrible. I remember taking it and being like, I might puke right now. I just kept going for the grape, or the like, root beer. Yeah, root, root beer. beer and the grape soda. Yeah. Fago bombs are real good. All day. Real All tasty. Day. What a Western Michigan thing, fago bombs. <laughs> Oh, I know. It's great. Isn't it? Fago? It's Fago's Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. It's Detroit. Yeah, Fago's 100% a Detroit thing. Yeah. Michigan thing. Whatever, bro. Kyle, you ever had a Fago bomb? Nope. You ever had Fago? Sure. What's your favorite Fago? I don't like Fago. What do you mean? Not even rock and rye? I don't drink soda. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, none of us drink soda on a regular... Actually, you you kill a Dr. Pepper here and there. I like Dr. Pepper a lot, yeah. It's like, I, I kill my... I kick myself every time I, I have one, but... I don't think I've, like, regularly drank pop in probably, like, six or seven years. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've just, like, gone to a store and grabbed a soda. Dude, it's ultimately ridiculous how much sugar is in pop. Yeah. Well, hang on. That's flawed, though, because, like, well, it's not flawed. Six or seven years is a long time. But I feel like what happened was we all got to be 21 and it just transitioned and you know where they drink it casually it's just yeah a mixer. you're it's like well if i'm gonna drink yeah. beers all the time i can't be drinking beers and pop no i dude i think it was before i guess it was like when i started drinking no nick i meant like mixers for like liquor oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where it came in true okay fair I don't enough know, i guess the only mixer i ever have at this point this is, is already like, a lie i know you drink soda because i go get it with you <laughs> 
<laughs> Tim's like, when, once, what? I was about to say, the I only mixers I get are like for Jack and Cokes. And what's, 90% what's of the half time, of that? <laughs> Kyle what? just painted one of those Bugs Bunny like holes in the mountain and Tim's Wiley Coyote running full speed ahead, just smack into the wall. <laughs> Dude, you, it's just not that common. Like most, most days are oh. beer days. <laughs> There was definitely a phase probably like two years ago where I drank a lot of Mixies. I had a huge... I haven't really drank pop like six or seven years. <laughs> huge Jack and Diet phase. Yeah. That was the Those thing. Those are delicious. But also like, dude, at Brown Jug and um, Blue Lep in downtown Ann Arbor, they're like, what, $3 Jim and Cokes? Yeah, Jimmy Beam. Jim, I love it. Jim Beam. Jim and Coke. A little Red Stag. Those are good. No, not Stag. Just original bourbon. That's Jim Beam though. Red Stag's Jim yeah, Beam? Yeah, yeah. Super You strong. had a big Stag phase. I literally bought two fifths. Brennan had a big red stag phase. No, so did you, dude. I remember I, you'd hit I me bought, up all the time. You'd be like, you'd send me snaps. You'd be like, no ball of stag. And then you brought up know, a few. Dude. I had two fits just alone in my apartment in Grand Rapids because you brought them up. I don't know, man. I, I never a, even I bought had a lot it. of different liquor phases. You were like, Canada House. <laughs> cheap, cheap whiskey and Coke, though. Not, or, yeah, exactly. Entirely. So, <sighs> segueing away from that. There was some big news today in the uh, the realm of the NBA, Tim, and I know you're a big NBA fan, so um, I, d- I know a little bit about this just from the news that I saw, but I feel like you can probably weigh in a little bit on this, but we got a 22-team tournament here. Yeah, so from my understanding of it is the there's they're taking the top 22 teams in the league. Yeah. So there's going to be 13 Western Conference teams. R.I.P. Pistons. Eastern Conference teams. Yeah, it's a tough look. I think the bottom eight... Bottom eight or bottom six, I'm not 100% sure on this, are doing a play-in for the eighth seed in the playoffs. Yeah. So they're doing like a little tournament there. That's kind of cool, though. I like that. Yeah, I like it, too, because all those teams were within the playoff hunt where it was they should have an opportunity. realistic yeah. for them to make the playoffs. Give them an opportunity to get yeah. in there. And then after that, it's going to be straight playoffs. Yep. The interesting thing that I'm looking forward to... I know what you're going to say. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that... The NBA, for the first time in a long time, isn't going to be able to dominate its own space in time. Right, because usually they end in June. Yeah, but the playoffs are May or March, April. I guess they probably start April, May, and June. It kind of follows a similar track of hockey to an extent. Yeah, hockey is... But hockey has a very, like, dedicated fan base. So does the NBA. Yeah, those two go... They don't really mix. Pretty much their seasons are the exact same. Yeah. Um, but now we're going to see the NBA ranked up against the big boys in college football in the NFL. And if college football is king, baby. College football is king. You know this. It'll be cool. I mean, I see a lot of potential. Like, it could be a very cool fall for sports in terms of, like, how much you can, like, ingest uh, throughout a week on any, on any weekly basis, basically, between college football, NBA basketball, and if they bring baseball back, they're going to be playing in the fall, too. Uh, we're we're gonna have some playoff hockey as well. I think that yeah. might end a little bit before all of that, but it will definitely like it's gonna be so hard to keep up bit. with all of it, dude. I'm I'm super stoked about it. Yeah. Uh, but my concern for the NBA specifically is that let's say the Lakers don't make the NBA Finals. Yeah. Nobody's gonna watch it. Like their ratings are gonna sink so hard. Just because Bron because won't be in it right now. Bron is the guy in the NBA. Yes, you have Giannis. Yes, you have a bunch of these other crazy players. Harden, you know, KD's not going to be playing. There's just really not too many super interesting storylines. Obviously, the Clippers have star power. Yeah, I was going to say. But they're not a national brand. Yeah, but the Clippers are a very interesting team to keep watch out for right now with Kawhi and um, uh, George uh, Paul George. Like, that's... That yeah, mean, no, it's the, an interesting the, team, but I mean, here's the difference. When they were brought that together, there was so much hype around it. I, I mean, still think they're the best team in the NBA. I think they'll come out of the West. Yeah. I think in when it comes to playoff, their depth just... But who comes out of the East? The East is a complete toss-up. Milwaukee's have was on pace for an unreal season. Boston can beat anybody. Big Boston guy. It's it's true. If Especially if Jason Tatum kept, keeps playing at the level he was when quarantine went into effect. Brooklyn's not doing too hot, are they? Well, Katie's not coming back. Kyrie's not coming back, so they're donezo. Uh, let's see. Who's the second seed? Toronto was the second seed at Yo, the time. Yo, Toronto, yeah. I don't, I don't think Toronto can make any noise in the playoffs without a go-to number one score. Great yeah, team. since Kawhi left, it's, for sure. It's really cool to see the defend. I love when defending champs go to defend the title. Yeah. I hate when they blow it up right after. True. Um, so that's really cool to see them pushing. But other than that, I mean, Philly's one of the most stacked rosters in the NBA. Bro, what about the Heat? And I was about to say, and last but not least, the Miami Heat. 
who just have a really well balanced team. I was going to say, like, but Jimmy Aubings- Butler can't be the number one guy on a championship team, if you ask me. We'll see how that plays out. I could see it just because of how well balanced they are, especially yeah. with their bench. Their bench isn't half bad from what I've seen in red. Uh, but, I mean, they could easily make a push with a healthy roster. Yeah, they, they could 100% win a series or two. I just don't see them going the long haul. I, d- I would never bet on them beating Philly, Boston. I think they could definitely. What's the deal with Philly? Philly's, Philly's got Embiid, Embiid and uh, Simmons. They, Simmons. They're, they're the type of style they play. They don't shoot outside the paint like Embiid shoots. Uh, well, we know that we know that Simmons doesn't shoot outside the paint. But like, you can't have a ball handler that doesn't shoot, doesn't provide spacing, and a seven-three guy who just demands attention in the post. Yeah. But with the way Ben Simmons works, he he operates out of the post most of the time offensively after he's when he's off the ball. So their offense just doesn't work, and there's a lot of chemistry issues there. But the thing is, they just have so much talent. Where if they could put it together for not even seven games in a series but if they could put it together for four games in a series yep they could easily they, they argue That's all you it need is, it is arguable that they have the most talent on paper on a roster in the nba the sixers easily really you've got arguably the best center in the league i can't argue it but Joel it just blows Embiid. my mind because you've the sixers got, have been asked for so long well the thing is they haven't they just don't pr- pr- uh it's like the lions <laughs> they never took it to the next level they've got three number one draft picks they've got Al Horford, who they brought over to be like a steady guy, yeah, who was phenomenal on Boston uh, and Atlanta before that. They, they just oh, what about Atlanta? Fuck the Hawks! Come on, man, they, they're terrible. They they didn't make. The, oh, maybe Trey Young is going off. No, dude, the Hawks. Wait, Vince Carter's on the Hawks, right? Yeah, no, the Hawks didn't make the the final cut. They're not in the cut. No, bummer. Hey, uh, shouts out Vince Carter retiring twenty two years in the NBA. Most overrated player in NBA history. Not here for it. What he's uh, he's played with so many influential players though, and he's been on so many influential teams. No, he hasn't. He's he's definitely a beast. No, he hasn't. Vince Carter's a beast. Vince Carter is. He's the, an OG. He's an OG, but he had he had three really good seasons from like ninety nine to O. Did he win a championship? No. Oh. Oh yeah, he did. He I was gonna say, Dallas. I thought he did. He won with Dallas, but he wasn't even a top five player on that team. Doesn't matter. Still Dirk won. averaged like. 40 and 10, 40 and 12 that entire postseason. Yeah, Dirk's run. a beast. Nobody's denying it. Vince and Carter, Dirk, also beast. Not at that stage. Weathered, but beast, nonetheless. That's the thing, though. That was in 2011, and Vince Carter was already washed at that point, and he played like another nine years. That's crazy. But the, the man's a machine. Yeah, no, crazy athletic. Like That's yeah. the thing. Like Took really good care of his body, but he never cared to tr- take his game to the next level. The dunks were sick. But his three point shooting has always been spotty. His like overall game has his game never evolved. I mean, if your game is if, if if you provide if you provide utility for teams doing what you're doing, I mean, I get you got like it's always good to get better. But you know, he, he stayed in the league for as long as he did for a reason. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when he first came in the league, people were dubbing him the more athletic or the taller Michael Jordan. Okay. That, well, see, that's that a stretch. The, that's that, a stretch. Well, that's the thing. For those three years, he was. Crazy good. He didn't want to play in Toronto, and then it got kind of weird. Where did he go to college? Sorry. UNC. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, Vince Carter, blue chip recruit. I think you want to say he was drafted third overall. That's cool, man. It's not about right. No, great, great longtime player, good ambassador of the game. But he's one of those guys who it's like, I wish T-Mac had his longevity and la- lack of injury. Because Tracy McGrady. T-Mac would have been An absolute a unit. Top. The man just knew how to put the basket yeah. where it needed to be. Dude, he, he was knew so how to get those back. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah, no, so long story short, NBA's back. Didn't mean to get off a little tangent there. Uh, but, yeah, I my prediction is I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be L.A., Boston in the finals, and the Clippers yeah. are going to win in six games. Okay, I mean, I don't really know enough about basketball to really give a prediction here, but I do want to jog back to the point where you made that it's going to be in the fall, which is with, with the king, college football. So we're going to have NBA – Playoffs going on, finals going on, which is either going to be huge or it's going to be a huge flop. But then we have college football, which is never a flop. Yeah. College football demands so much attention, so much viewership. So I'm just curious to see how those ratings play out, and I think we're really going to see, you know, where people tend to focus their attention when it comes to, but when it comes between the two, like what's 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 the big daddy sport. Is it going to be the NBA or is it going to be college football? No, but won't they just schedule it appropriately? Don't you think they'll call each other up and be like, yo, can we please both not be at 8 p.m.? No, the (laughs) thing is like... Which could very well happen. 
so the interesting thing about competition between sports leagues themselves is you think of them as like professional or collegiate associations, right? But no, they're their own businesses. Like, they're their own business and they're direct yeah, competitors. No, for so yeah, I yeah. think right now the upward trajectory of the NBA, I think Adam Silver being as aggressive as a commissioner as he is, it wouldn't surprise me if they did have a couple let's say NBA final games on a Saturday night because that's what they're accustomed to. You can't have a, a big game on a Tuesday night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because so viewership they're, tanks. They're going to have to compete, and I don't know. The NBA does have a lot of momentum going forward. Well, the NBA also uses completely different networks than, like, the NCAA does, like TNT and uh, uh, there's a few other ones. The finals are ABC, though. Oh, are they? But you, well, you, well, you don't think they'll sh- they'll they'll negotiate some things around? I don't know. I, I can a, see that's it happening. An interesting thing. I I haven't read enough to know or comment on that. TV but, deals I mean, are going to be big when it comes to the fall. But the thing is, they can't have NBA on ESPN for the finals, which is on ABC as well, and have like Saturday night primetime college football, which is better. Oh yeah. Well, in my opinion, I I also agree with that sentiment. I I love college football more than I love the NBA. But the NBA Finals are generally pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, it's great entertainment. I watch, like, I don't watch the NBA regular season, but I watch majority of the playoffs and I watch the finals. Oh. Like, that's when I get into the season, which might be, like, pretty, uh, no, I, mean, I don't know, like, uh, I might get matter. dogged by, like, the true NBA fans for that. But, like, at the same time, like, I, I show up because I want to see the best, the like, the best play. And, you, like, yeah, you get really good play throughout the regular season, but I want to see you, like, I want to see what it comes down to. Who's going to beat out who? What are the big plays that are just going to make history? What do you think, like, in what ways do you think play style changes from, like, the regular season to playoffs? Because you're talking about seeing well, the best play. I know you mean, like, the best players, but at the same time, I feel like even the average player plays better in the playoffs. So you make it to the playoffs. Okay, in my eyes, I mean, maybe I'm totally off on this, but in my eyes, you make it to the playoffs, it's like you hit a hole in the gear. You're like, okay, we made it to the playoffs. We got through the trenches of the regular season. Now we have an opportunity to really make a run here and potentially get to the end goal, which is the finals. Like you're not playing; if you make it that far, you want to win the finals. It's not so about the finals, it's about the Nike deal. Yeah, ex- <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe, and that's the thing too is I know like when you make it to the playoffs, a lot of the guys see it as an opportunity to really prove themselves and step up in big time situations. Like, are you going to be a guy who puts your team that like makes that clutch shot or like makes that amazing play right, that yeah. puts your team ahead? It's so like, like, it, like it, I feel like it encompasses a whole different mindset. Yeah, it's. Playoff, okay, so here's the interesting thing about the NBA. Every team has at least one, like, good player, like, really good player. The difference between the playoff teams and the non-playoff teams is the supporting cast. Sure. And then, as what we've seen for the NBA for the past, I'd say, eight years significantly, is there's generally been two teams, on one on each side, or two on one, like that are that stacked. You, yeah, that you know yeah. are going to win. Straight it's up. It's been the Warriors, the Cavs, the Heat, before that, the Lakers, and the Celtics. For Since 2010, that's just kind of the way it's been. Yeah. It's like, go bust. So, Why is that, though? Just more money in the league? It's just no, the way there, shit falls. There's been a recent movement yeah. of player mobility. Yeah. So, and the way the caps change, they can afford to have a couple big superstars and sign a bunch of, like, older veterans who have had good careers and still have a lot of like good basketball to play hmm. but they're the, not as good as they once the were. players have been really active with getting each other on teams too like yeah. there's definitely like a like i feel like collusion such like a, a a tainted word but like these players like they perfect. discuss these things yeah and they're like imagine us on a team yeah perfect with, example sorry yeah. to cut you off there no. but so nba gms are not allowed to talk or agents are not allowed to talk to opposing players at all while under contract, but sure. other players can talk to other players whenever Which they want. happens a lot. So last year, LeBron was his first season in L.A. for the Lakers. Anthony they Davis. weren't that good. They pl- they had a road game in New Orleans. Next thing you know, there's a picture spotted of LeBron James and Anthony Davis sitting and having dinner. The brow. If you think LeBron James doesn't have more control over the roster in Los Angeles than the actual GM does, yeah. you're Dude. wrong. I mean, so, dude, there's like, a reason why Magic Johnson stepped down. You said the brow. It's like a singular eyebrow has been raised at a picture. No, LeBron the brow is Anthony, Anthony Davis, Davis no, bro. I know. I but 100%. <laughs> no, the brow was like, so, Bron, are you trying to link? And Bron was like, come to, come no, to it LA. Was, it was the other way. Bron was like, hey, 
I got to get this Lonzo kid out of here. Kuzma's questionable. Kuzma's, we got a lot of, Kuzma's definitely questionable. We got a lot of guys here that we could just get rid of. You know, the as Lakers, a personality though, Kyle Kuzma's elite. No, I, I, <laughs> I don't know why, dude. I, I think Kyle Kuzma's Kuzma. inti- like, I, incredibly entertaining. I resent Kyle Kuzma because him and Tatum were drafted in the same draft classes. For two years, I had to listen to my old roommate talk about how, talk Kuzma, about was how better. Kuzma was better than Tatum. I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like I said, sure I like not. him as a personality. I think he's yeah, hilarious. He's funny. But uh, but I think the main difference between the regular se- season and the NBA is once the first 25, 30 games go by in the regular season, you know who's making the playoffs, at least the top five, six teams. You have a you pretty good idea. You yeah. know who's missing the playoffs. Because really, it doesn't really change. Like, yeah. yeah. And like, to be honest, games between the seven, eighth, ninth, and tenth seeds, which would be the hardest played games, you know, they're actually not that entertaining to watch because you don't really have any superstars on those teams, most likely. So I enjoy watching regular season because each night you never know if, what's going to pop. Yeah, off. if Trey Young's going to drop fifty on the worst team in the league, you know. But that's the cool thing. There's always something going on yeah. when the playoffs happen. The players definitely take it way more seriously. You see LeBron do his zero dark 30 thing every year. They stay off social media, and they don't take games off. Right. And, and I think that's a cool thing about basketball, too. I'm sorry to cut you no, off there, good, but, like, when you said, like, Trey Young's going to go off and, like, could shoot, like, could score 50 on the worst team in the league. Like, basketball is such a finesse sport that, like, you could see something incredible go down in any given game. And yeah. it could be something that's seen that's played on Sports Center for the next, you know, I don't know, 10 months to a year, whatever it may be. But it's like, if you're watching it live, a lot of that stuff happens in basketball that just yeah. sticks around, hangs around, because some of the plays that they make, whether it's intentional or not, is absolutely insane. Yeah. It's an incredibly fun sport to watch and from a spectator's point of view. The level of talent in the NBA has grown so significantly. Yeah, and they're in so the athletic. the 20 years where, like I said, every single team, the worst team in the league this year, I want to say, was the Hawks. And they have one of the top five leading scorers in the NBA in Trey Young. Like, were they really that bad? Wait, I have a question. The Hawks are terrible. Did you oh, say? No. Did you say you think Tatum or Kuzma was the better player? Tatum's a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, player. I looked it up. Just all the stats. Basically, every major stat goes in his favor. Oh yeah, like, Tatum's a beast, question. dude. No, Tatum. Tatum, like he came out and led that team. What What people? And I'm not saying this because I'm a Boston fan, but I've heard even Stephen A. Smith say this. Tatum within the next three to five years will be yeah. a perennial top yeah. three top four mvp candidate after so Kyrie is, left the celtics he just like stepped it, into the, a huge role it was He's done extremely well so being a boston fan we brought in kemba this year as opposed to Kyrie. Yeah, i thought the fit was a lot better but everyone thought kemba was going to be that guy you got tatum and brown on the outside you got a lot of other you got gordon hayward you got daniel tice you got a lot of other good role pieces it's a really overall solidly built roster but nobody really knew who the number one guy was. That's a problem. And then halfway, can be. halfway through this season, I Tatum, he, he got the all-star nod, so it was his first time being an all-star. And as soon as that happened, he said there was a weight lifted off of him. And this dude had a month-and-a-half stretch before quarantine where he was a top three player in the NBA. Sure. He was averaging like, 30, like 31 a night on really efficient shooting. And literally, if you watch any game with the Celtics, he, he could do anything he wanted. His offensive arsenal was great, and he stepped up his defense. It was fun to watch. Yeah, you said that, like, you think the talent level has increased in the NBA. How much do you think that's attributed to, like, the rise of the Internet and an ability to, like, see other people's training styles and watch your favorite player in real time and stuff like that? I, I, no, I was going to say, I think that. it's directly related. I mean, the more the more you can promote yourself, the more, like, eyes you can get on kids who are potential prospects – I mean, you never know. Like, you might be really good in high school, and you might be pretty damn good in college. That's but not even what I mean, though. I mean, like, for the people that are on the up-and-coming, I didn't say that right, on the come-up, you can you have access to, like, more information about how to train and get better. I think, I mean, it, I think okay. it's that, but also I think what the big change was is about 25 years ago, we saw a shift from... Uh, over like generalization in youth sports to now it's specialization in youth sports. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a so, really good point. That's very fair. Yeah, like tw- like if LeBron James, for example, was all state in football, that doesn't happen for perennial athletes right no, now. Because it's Alan just okay. Granted, players. granted, LeBron is a complete different ball game. Like I get your different point, though, different yeah. scale. But that's the thing. The biggest basketball recruit, arguably of all time, was still playing football till his junior year of high school. 
Like that doesn't happen. And now, the, with the how big the AAU circuit is and how big coaches won't let it happen. Coach, yeah. Like straight up, the, for some of these like AAU teams, like Tim is talking about, it's like, listen, you're playing basketball, and if you want to play something, like literally, like a lot of the times, you have to be strictly. Yeah, basketball. but I thought that the old mantra was like, you want to play different sports that challenge different parts of your body, so you don't get overuse injuries. But that's why they do all these camps. Is why they do specialty training. All these kids get hurt. I can think of a million kids, especially like my younger sister playing softball in the softball world. They all get hurt because they just play softball all year. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, well, I. <laughs> I, I understand that. More likely to get hurt pl- probably playing football. I know. I get your point. I, and I also get that, like, you take your chances because you'd rather practice your sport all year long. But what I, what I was about to say is right now there's a push by NBA players to lessen the load on these youth kids. Yeah. There is a significant – where they would still be specialized in just basketball, but instead of having the, enti- the entire summer, the entire fall, the entire winter, the entire spring, be year-round tournaments, year-round, three games a week – where it's like, all right, maybe you play a couple games every month, yeah. but in the meantime, you just do training, you do, you work on your body, you work on, yeah. work, you know, you to avoid different. stuff like that. But just the like, thing is, like, go. at the AAU level now, higher level AAU teams, it's no longer amateurism. Just oh, like a college basketball good. team isn't amateurism anymore. They take it as a professional sport. Yeah. These kids are pushed like a professional athlete because they know the competition is so high. That if you don't push yourself like a professional athlete when You'll you're lose, 12, yeah. 13, 14, you're not going to make, make it. Yeah, it's where they separate the, the boys from the men. Yeah. Men from the boys. Which, I mean, it has pros and cons, but I think overall it's led to a... It's ultimately just led to better athletes, honestly. Isn't that funny, though, how, like, naturally everyone's like, I want to beat you, so I'm going to start earlier. And right. it just, like, snowballs into, like, but at the end of the day, Duncan. Think about it. I mean, you said it earlier that these these entities are businesses. So you know that they're they're literally like, okay, well, we have to, like, grow this business from the roots up, which literally means we have to start getting this stuff. We have to start training these potential athletes from, from the ground age. up. Yeah, if you want to be a 16 yeah, the more champion, we can promote you be an 11-year competitor. Yeah, the more you can yeah. promote camps, the more you can promote the game on and making an impression on the youth, the more likely they're going to get into it, and then just that's how you grow the sport. Yeah, I was about to say, especially in basketball, there's an incentive for coaches, there's an incentive for agents to find these youth prospects. Oh, dude, it's insane. And there's a lot of money passing hands yeah. that never see the athlete which I think is one of the biggest issues we see today. But there's so much money being passed around between AAU coaches, Wait, like, agents, like universities. Like they're getting pimped out? Hmm? Like they're getting, like, pimped out? I oh. guess that's a very harsh way of saying it, but, yeah. There was a recent documentary. I can't remember who it was on, but they were talking about that. Like, in AAU basketball, like, um, there was this guy who was super well-known for being, like, at all these major camps and, like, kind of being like a, an agent for these kids like basically sending them out to like potential prospects and like yeah, he was the getting Louisville guy. yeah that's exactly what, what louisville or kentucky it was louisville i want to say it was under it was coach k the guy dealt with coach k a ton well that's duke but oh no not yet um no no calipari calipari coach thank cal. coach cal yes yeah, sorry the guy dealt with coach cal a ton maybe it was uh, that i know what you're thinking of is the adidas guy no, it wasn't the Adidas guy. It was literally a guy who was like he was so attributed with finding young talent and then basically passing on their information and getting them into all these camps. And the guy was getting paid so much freaking money from all these programs because he was responsible for bringing a lot of these kids not only to the camps that they were associated with, but ultimately getting them to commit to certain schools. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And this guy was I can't remember his freaking name. Wait, so like if you were the coach of a team, you would get him to get the player to come to your school and you'd pay him full. Well, he'd basically just yes, be like, hey, exactly. I found this kid. I've been working with him for a long time. Like, he's been doing all these camps, and he'd get him into, like... Okay, so they, so they like, made it murky by just going, find me the best, and then we'll pay you for it. <laughs> kind yeah. of. A lot of times they're considered boosters for a school that mm. pay money to a program. They're A lot of times they're rich, wealthy people who probably went to the school or something, have a vested interest in the school doing sure. well, yeah, and sure. they've gotten in in the AAU circuit, so... Anytime they see a really good prospect, what generally happens is school gives the booster money or the booster indirectly pays the parents of a player that's really good. Yeah. And doing so gets a kickback from the school. Yeah. Like, I want to say this guy was associated with D. Rose when he got him to coach Coach Cal at uh, Memphis. Yeah, I, I know the guy you're talking about, but I'm actually, like I said, I'm pretty sure that was 
the Adidas guy who who ended with Adidas, because and that's what that was the big scandal at Louisville. No, other I, than the prostitutes. And I all that. honestly don't think he was associated with Adidas at all because now he's he was the one who was pushing back on how um, like agents had to be like college educated and stuff like he was a big uh, component for that stuff when it comes to basketball. Um, yeah, I don't. I I want to say I don't know. I could be wrong. You could be right, but I don't think he was associated well, with Adidas in any manner. I think the thing is like, there's so many cases of all of this going. Oh on. yeah, like, it's yeah. insane. It's yeah, it's a it's, crazy. it's such a big industry. Yeah, it, industry. it's actually nuts. But and there's so much money to be passed around, like you said. Like I mean, these guys are making hundreds of thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars just by finding a kid that's like has great potential. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just like uh, oh, good example. LeBron James was offered a ten or eighteen million dollar, ten or eighteen million dollar contract by Reebok when he was eighteen years old. To do nothing more than not sign with another team or with another. It was ten million. Ten million. Yeah. So, okay, I was right first. Oh, you're good. He was eighteen when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what I was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he turned it down, and then a year later signed for a lot more money with Nike. Like, that yeah. That kind of stuff happens. And you're pressuring a bunch of Not eight, to... seven, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids who a lot of the time don't come from a great economic background. Yep. So they're, they're pretty much exploiting these kids for what they are. You know what's cool about that is that LeBron knew that that $10 million wasn't going to be oh, worth dude. his value. LeBron's That's genius, cool. Man. Yeah, LeBron, knew, like, he just knew he was going to be better. He was like, screw that. Seriously. I mean, I'm sure he had people, like, you know, that were smart and advised him in certain aspects, but, like, the Maverick. dude definitely knows how good he is. Maverick Cat. But the other thing, too, is, like, all these, like, like boosters and guys who support these athletes, these young athletes through, like, their, their high school and college careers, they basically get them – wrapped up in in these so-called contracts and then once they actually sign a deal in the pros like they expect to collect all this money for reimbursement and interest on all of it and it's like a lot of these guys get screwed over hmm. in some aspects i don't know how much of a problem it is anymore but for a while there i feel like it was definitely an issue wait say that again if you're a player you get a bunch of money from the yeah so like these guys front. would be like paying their way like uh, giving them money through their college programs and maybe even high school depending on how good they were i see and then yeah. once they got to the pros they'd sign a contract for and a couple million want, dollars and, the and these boosters would come back and be like okay well Here's all the money that I was paying you while you were, you know, doing all this, and then here's the interest I feel is associated to it yeah, on top fair. of it. And so they would negotiate it up front. That's twisted in general, but yeah, if they're gonna do it. it needs exactly. To be it up front. And it was I don't know how much of an issue it is anymore because of how strict everything is. I'm sure it still happens in some regards, but it was definitely <laughs> his face. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's your take on that? I think it's just got a lot more mainstream now, to where there's no longer agents taking interest back. I think it's just like schools are directly like, here's your weekly stipend. Yeah. We're going to mark it down as $150 a week, but in all reality, it's five grand. Like, these these high-profile recruits, and now brands are getting in with it. Like, Nike paid Zion a boatload of money, and that just came out. So, like, people are like, what's oh, going yeah, on dude. with that? Uh, I mean, this goes back so far. The Fab Five were the first ones, which yeah, still I mean, that's nothing's ever made me been think of truly, it. truly proven. That's what kind of made me think Chris of Weber it. Chris Webber still denies that he took any money to this But the other guys right? don't. No, Chris Webber was the only one who allegedly took money. And he still denies it, and the other guys are like, there's a decent amount of evidence. We're just pissed about how you handled the situation. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's the interesting thing, because, like, Chris Webber had that beef. Like, why do you think Chris no. Webber, it took him 25 years to come back to the university? Well, no, I, I get I, so pissed. I understand the, the story. Portrayed. I thought the other guys just kind of fessed up to it, like, yeah, we took this amount of money or whatever. Like, they admitted to it, and Chris didn't. No, no, what they admitted to was that booster allowing them to drive their car, and they got sneakers in high school. Okay. But not financial sums. If they didn't get financial support, then yeah, that's you know whatever. But uh, I I was under the impression that it was could be obviously, I feel like you're right. But uh, yeah, Chris Webber just it's Chris Webber. Chris Webber, crazy crazy good basketball player. It's crazy how much like overshadow his career gets by the UNC timeout, the Michigan scandal. Yeah. Because dude, that dude is a Hall of Fame basketball player. He was so good, dude. He was good. He was amazing. He yeah. was. <laughs> I remember. I remember watching vid- like highlights of the ki- of the dude when he was still playing in youth group leagues, like nuts in Detroit. Nuts. 
he was smashing backboards like it was nobody's business in like 10th grade and he could shoot he was like one of the first main like stretch fours who had a handle dribble it up and down the court could pull up yeah could he's commentating now isn't he yeah, if he does stuff for TNT. Yeah. You know, honestly, I don't love his commentating style, but it, it's not terrible. There's definitely worse out there. Yeah, he floats up every once in a while, and every time I see him, I'm just like, well, there he is. There's the guy. Yeah, the Fab Five documentary was really well done, so it brought some light to the situation. Without a doubt. Uh, kind of playing off this, dude. Uh, did you see the whole J.R. Smith shit? Oh, dude, <laughs> speaking of great NBA players. All-time goats, the pipe god himself, J.R. Smith. The henny man himself, 100%. Dude, yeah. J.R. Smith might be, like, oh. the best all-time, like, NBA I don't give all, like, did you, player. Did you know that he actually doesn't really like Hennessy that much? He's, like, come out and publicly said that. Even though he's, like, everybody attributes dude. him as being, like, the Henny guy because he's at the parade and he's got the bottle. Dude, there's so many pictures of him drinking Henny. Yeah, he, he literally <laughs> says he's a jack guy. It does say that he says he doesn't even drink it. Yeah. Even there's so like many it. pictures of him It's probably because it, it just gets handed to him. Like, I feel like it just gets handed to him. He's just like, fuck. I think he's, like, a, I think he's a Jack Daniels guy. That's a From what the I... The way, this says that there's a picture everyone says where he's drinking Henny and it's actually a champagne bottle. It just looks like it. Oh. So everyone botched it. There's a bunch of pictures. I think there's a picture of him at, at a parade drinking Henny, yeah. There's, at the there's Cleveland. There's a picture of him at, at the parade, at the club. Yeah. The one at the club's elite. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he came out and publicly said, he's like, yeah, I don't really like Hennessy that much. That's awesome. Which I thought was hilarious. But two, that video of him during, okay, so like, a little backstory, backstory if you yeah, haven't seen it, uh, basically somebody vandalized JR's property out in uh, LA or wherever he's smashed, at. It was out in California. It was his uh, truck, right? Yeah, smashed, yeah, smashed, smashed the, the window the wind, out. Wind, window and windshield. Or yeah. just windshield. One of the two. One of the Anyways, two. he smashed the window in his truck. And JR came out and just literally just beat the living hell out of him for a few seconds. And this dude, I'm not going to lie, JR's got a, uh, got a pretty sweet posse. Like, his buddies that were around him, like, one of the dudes is like, respect his privacy, while he's literally just sitting there beating the shit out of this guy for a few, like, for a, like, Please he, like, got things. in, he got in, Please like, two really things. clean punches. Dude was on the ground, and he just started kicking him. Dude, he wailed off a lot. Yeah. And JR Smith is 6'6", 225. I was going to say, he's not a muscle. small dude, and this guy that was, look, this guy looked like a midget next to him. He looked, yeah, it was, it was a tough scene. I think... So he came on the Pat McAfee show. Yeah. Uh, today or was that today or yesterday? No, it was two days it ago. May have been yes. I thought the video surfaced Tuesday. two days ago. Oh, anyways, days just these days just blend together. Bro, I'm telling you. Uh, but yeah, so it was three days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. So it was Monday when it happened. So yeah, McAfee. Yeah, was but Tuesday McAfee talked about it yeah. Tuesday. Uh, so he came on. And he was like, "Look, man." I love what the the current protest situation has been about. Yeah. But the rioting and looting is completely convoluting what the movement's supposed to be about. So he was like... Jair said the same thing. That's exactly what... I was quoting Jair. Oh, I thought you were quoting Jair. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, 100%. That's what it got, Jair. Well, I was like, that sounds like exactly what Jair was saying. I thought he was talking about McAfee, though, so Um, good stuff. So he says Jordan Clarkson, who lives... Who's another NBA player, lives around the corner from him, and said, like, yo... Go look outside. There's They're like fucking shit up. going on, and apparently he walked out and saw his car window smashed. And for, if we're being honest, like this is like your classic scrawny antifa. White I'm pretty dude. sure the dude <laughs> had like purple bangs or whatever. Yeah. Like the oh, guy just looked like he sucked. He had nothing to do with the black. Life Watching Jr. just haul off and deck great. this dude it in the face, I was like, cool. "Fuck yeah, dude! That was like, sweet." I'm here for it, and pretty much. <laughs> best part is after it happened he realized there was a video that got out yeah and he just went on instagram and he was like hey so there's a video of me out there and it's something i regret except i shouldn't have done that but this dude was messing up my property yeah he was vandalizing and my property and i took a stand against it yeah exactly he's like we ain't in he's like we're in a residential area there's no reason to loot or riot or loot here he Literally. was acting by himself and he got what was coming for him ten thousand percent made a mistake won't happen again Perfect response. Yeah, absolutely perfect. I they're they're pro- honestly, if I had to guess, I don't think there's going to be any repercussions of it at all. Well, I just think that because the guy was messing with him, yeah, I feel a need to be mad. No, you're totally like, entitled to, to, to defend yourself and your property. If you came outside and some punk like that was, Kyle's like they stole my wiper blade. Window. I'm going to kill someone. They did. <laughs> God, somebody stole Kyle's wiper blade. They did. You know what I did? What'd you do? I went to the auto parts store and bought a new one because I don't know who did it. <laughs> Kyle's like, but when I find them. Chokehold. It's probably you. <laughs> yeah. 
Probably was me. That should be great. Blacked <laughs> out, don't even remember it, wandered on over. I'm like, <laughs> like, you know, it'd be funny if I stole Kyle's wiper blade, but I'm like, freaking FCA products, couldn't get the damn thing off, so I just snapped it in half. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah, I would have done the same thing. 10,000%. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I would have been as successful as Jr., but I would have gave it a go. (laughs) I would like to think so, but still, like Jr. Smith, that just like reinforces why I like everybody. The pipe god. Yeah, so like Jr. Smith got a lot of shit. You pull up that clip, or it's not a clip; it's a screenshot of Jr. Smith trying to get the pipe. (laughs) Dude, brutal. (laughs) But Jr. Smith has gotten a lot of shit ever since the NBA Finals, where he wasn't paying attention to the clock and like just. It blew it, and he a lot of people give him shit for that. But like, the, the Cavs weren't winning that series anyway. No, exactly. He literally says that he goes, "Listen, I made a mistake. I didn't pay attention to the clock." He's like, "I was really focused on where I was supposed Score. to be and who I was guarding." And he's like, "At the end of the day, he's like, we, we probably weren't winning that series anyways." And he's like, "But that's not to say that I wasn't trying to win." He's the, like, "I was hyper focused." The point was completely missed that if George Hill just makes that free throw, the yeah. point is mute. Yeah, literally, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Exactly. So at the end of the day, J.R. Smith is. Honestly, I lo- I love J.R. Smith. Like he's entertaining as hell. I'll he's say, fun to watch. He's always out here hitting some random ass dagger that nah, everybody's bro. just like. J.R. Smith is so slept on as like an actual good. He's like, not even on a team right now. Granted, he's he was in the league for a long time. He's he's getting a little older, and his shot selection needs a little bit of work on. Yeah, he's just kind of like he sometimes get out there and just jacks that thing, which I'm not mad at. But if you tell me there's not a player in the NBA that he's better than. Yeah, he d- he should be on a team. Yeah, but as it he, is what it is. He's he's definitely still a six man. No, he's no longer a six man. Oh come on! No, no, he, not at all. No, not on any team. He's like an eighth man. Oh, I don't know. His man. his game his game the last couple of years has significant because the first okay when he was on the he? Nuggets and Knicks was he like thirty one thirty two? Oh, I bet he's older than that. Think so? Probably. Yeah, he's probably he, maybe closer to 35. Yeah, dude, he was playing on the Charlotte Hornets before they came back. Well, they... I think J.R. Smith was well, they came in, like, back 2002. Th- 34. Yeah. 34? He's, he's a pretty old dude. Yeah. And he's getting up there. All right, fair enough. Did it say where he went to college? Or did he come... Did he go to West Virginia by chance, or am I just making this up in my head? I'm trying to see if it's on here, otherwise I'll look it up. Um... <laughs> West Virginia. It's a preparatory school. It's the same. Oh yes. Yeah. So yeah, he came straight out of the league. I was like, he either went to West Virginia or came straight in the league. He signed to play with North Carolina, but I don't know if he did. Definitely didn't. Play Definitely didn't North play Carolina. for UNC. No. <laughs> he was like, get my bag. Goodbye. Roy Williams is like, we'll give you a bag too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Jr. Smith. The thing about when he was on the Hornets, when he was on the Knicks, and when he was on the Nuggets in the prime of his career, most of his Ooh gameplay came from the athleticism he had he's super crazy athletic. crazy like you said i mean he's six foot what five six six, six, six. two twenty five but he's he a beast had, of a man he had hops yeah he was a rare breed of athlete which is crazy, crazy because he does not look that big on the court but that's because exactly. everybody around him's giant yeah he's just and he could he could he had a really good mid-range game can finish at the rack his just shot selection and shot volume was too much not high percentage shots and not efficient enough for today's nba no not at all so all right, I, I, I hope we get to see J.R. Smith signed by someone. I hope we get to see him in the NBA again. That'd be pretty cool. Um, we've been going for a minute, boys. I'm trying to keep track of time. We are, we are cruising along. We, we should got last wrap call. it up soon. I'd, I'd say last call time. Last call. It's cool, man. I finished my beer a little while ago. You know, uh, at the at the beginning, Kyle, you said that you came out of the gay thing and you were going to be a big fan of this one. Um, I, I was kind of uh, hesitant to go along that route right, right out of the gate because I wasn't sure. Now, I, I did finish it pretty quick, and I did enjoy it, you know, for the most part, but I think at the end of the day, it's not the best beer I've ever had in the world. Um, it's not a bad one, to say the least. I guess for a red ale, uh, well, I guess an Irish pub-styled red. Um, <laughs> really, I think it's maybe the first time I've ever had an, an Irish pub-styled red, whatever that means, but uh, I, I'm going to go mad decent. You know, I, I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was pretty all right. Um, one of those beers where you can just kind of sip on, it's not a big deal. You're not going to think it's the best beer in the world, but if somebody goes, Hey, you got a beer and you got an extra one, you're probably going to give it to them and be like, Hey, give this one a whirl. Yeah. I, I, uh, couldn't agree with you more. This beer, everything about this beer screams neutral to me. Sure. (laughs) 
Sorry. And Something I, about that is funny. Do you know what I'm saying, though? Like, yeah. there's... Oh it's my like God. First, second, there's third gear really neutral. This is aggressively average. <laughs> aggressively average is actually probably the best way to describe See, this beer. No, I can't even call it aggressively average because it's not aggressive at all. <laughs> like, it's just... That, this like, is averagely average. Yeah, like, I I liked it. It wasn't bad. Beer's but it beer. wasn't great. It was yeah. just a good beer. Uh, I'm also going to go with Mad Decent on the rating. Uh, I, I, in all honesty, I just don't have a lot to say about it. Like it yeah. was, yeah. it was a pleasant drinking experience. It, uh, it got the job done. Like I, it, it warmed the warmer it got. I actually think I liked it a little bit more. Um, I, I'm going to concur with that. Yeah. I think if it got any warmer than it did, I'm, you're going to have I a bad probably time. Probably wouldn't be too big of a fan of it. Yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, I don't know. It's just like a very neutral beer. It's good. Like. <laughs> if you, yeah, I, I don't know. Get that warm, I think like, you brought. I think you made mouth. a good point there. I'm gonna. I like that a lot. That hit home with me. The warmer it got a little bit, I think the more I kind of eased up into it, and uh, I think it brought out some of the flavors. Yeah. Again, I, Nick Harvey, what's going on? I know, right? Cal, thoughts? Don't worry. When we play it back, you'll get a chuckle. Um, I don't want people to get it twisted. I I'm not a huge fan of this beer, but does it's better than like classic lagers like a Bud Light. Oh yeah, Bud Light. it doesn't even oh, come dude. close. I don't want people to think because I don't like it, it's not good. It's I, dude, craft beer. Craft beer is. I was about to say, I, well, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, there. Right. I honestly think we're, we've fallen victim of the last couple beers we've had. Now you're Super good. Spend, He's like, stealing my line. I was about to say the line. problem is we drink say all your the fucking piece. Good yeah. ones. Screw this guy. Dude. Say what you got to say. We drank such good beer. So now when I had this one, if this was the first one I would have tried, I'd have been like, wow, this is so good. It's smooth and it's full of flavor, but yeah. it's just not flavors that I'm enjoying because I've tasted what the flavors I like can be. I've seen well, what they can do with beers. Yeah, but I just want to say one thing. I try to look at the positive of everything and what I really like not to like harp on the packaging, but they put a bunch of information for you as a somebody who's drinking it about the malts and the, yeah. the featured hops yeah. that they put. I thought that was cool. I it thought that was cool. a really cool way to kind of bring people into the creative process. Entirely true, especially as guys who are trying to be more intuitive with our beer drinking process. It kind of gives us an idea of like, you know, you, you taste it and then you can read it. So you kind of get a better idea of like what you're experiencing. So I think yeah. all in all kind of brings it full circle. Yeah. Another thing I just came full circle on that I want to touch on. You know what this reminds me of like to the T? Here. Is that Budweiser a reserve? The Copper Reserve? Uh, the American Reserve. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Red Ale. The, the American Reserve. The Budweiser dude, I thought, style Irish Reserve. Dude, <laughs> I know, like, when I started tasting this thing, I was like, this reminds me of something so, like, so similar. I cannot remember what the hell that, it is, though. And that, that American Reserve. I think that American Reserve was a little harsher than this. This was definitely. Oh, yeah. This was way smoother. Yeah, but way smoother. In terms of, like, palatability and, like, taste-wise, like, it, I think it was, like, pretty that, damn that's close. That's a very, dude, that's what we should, that's what we should start doing during these shows, man. We should start doing, like, a comparable beer taste unless it's obviously what's it taste yeah, like i was gonna say what happens when it's not even like anything we you're just sipping it you're yeah, just yeah, like you know what, dude i got it. nothing this thing's uh, it's, cool, it's one of its own it's this out of this universe i think that's fair space to do too. <laughs> I, okay i completely redact everything i just said no though. no i get your point tim's like okay my ideas suck that's fine no, no it's good you gotta make fun of me no, I, like i said i think it's i think it's very useful for the viewers and very useful True. for us to talk about beers that you've I mean, it's probably even unlikely that a lot of people have the Budweiser American Reserve. Dude. But no. there's a lot more than we know. But but to me, I don't know. I've got no intrinsic issues with this beer. I'm I'm happy we had it. Yeah, you know, me too. Uh, I'm all about trying new beers. I'm not going to lie. Like Even the fact that it didn't wow my pants off, you know, it's whatever. It is what it is. My pants are still on. I'm here for it. I, I'm cool with it. Yeah, it's I'm good glad beer, they man. are. Exactly. So... With that said, I think that's a wrap on episode 18. You know, hey, we appreciate everybody that tuned in for the entire episode. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. Continue to give us ideas. Continue to comment on the posts. Like and subscribe this video. Tim, final words, remarks? Comment down below to let us know what you want to uh, to review. And the hat giveaway will be on Monday. We're yeah, announcing. hat giveaways on Monday. So. Uh, and Saturday, so it'll actually probably end before. No, actually, you guys should see this video potentially. Whatever, you know. Nonetheless, thanks for tuning in. Stay slightly buzzed, y'all. Cheers. You guys have a great night. Cheers. Mm-hmm.